I just want to say to people, to borrow $300 million, you've got to be absolutely spot on with the management. And as you know, management is a key for real estate, for businesses, for the government, everything. So the first thing that you always need to look at is affordability. And I think there's been no time other than right now as people are talking about affordability, meaning what does it cost in rent and what does it cost in mortgage, plus all the other things that it might be if you actually buy a home. In addition to that, you have to take a look at your individual wage growth, your income potential, and the cost of living in an area that you might be great. The one thing I want to point out is that everything from the mid United States West is basically says to rent and everything from the Midwest United States East basically says to buy with the exception of course, as some of these coastal cities, which are still green and say to rent. So Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, I buy apartment houses next to oil wells. I mean, you don't have to go to Harvard to figure that one out. You know, as long as you've got oil wells or something like that, real estate is always based jobs. If you have no jobs, real estate drops like a rock in value. So that's why I love Texas. We have you know, property in Dallas, lots of Oklahoma, Louisiana, and it's a wonderful, wonderful, fabulous. What's clear to me, if you focus on the Western United States and focus on some of these areas, then most of the people in these areas are probably going to be looking at renting versus buying because of affordability. What you're looking for here as an investor is a big difference between home ownership or mortgage price and rent. You want as big a gap as possible because the ability from a renter to go from a renter to a home is harder in these particular areas because of affordability. Here are facts. In 2021, Arizona added 98,000. Texas added 310,000. North Carolina added 93,000 people. And Florida added 211,000. Those are the numbers. They're all over the internet. Just, of course, these people are retired. They're young. They're displaced. Intentionally moved there for a reason. All kinds of spots. But they are the four top spot popular standpoint. What that does is that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the resources apply. So people are moving and they're making decisions with their feet. So if you're a renter and you want to buy a home, you're probably looking at relocating to some of these areas for affordability and being able to be a homeowner maybe for the first time. Yes, a lot of people rent by choice, but a lot of people definitely want to buy a home or buy an investment at some point, and they're going to be looking over here where it's more affordable to buy. So there's a young man in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, that I met exactly what he'd bought a home, and it had a, a unit uh, in the garage. Now, luckily, this had a detached garage, and he had to do a little bit of work, but that's an ADU. That's an accessible dwelling unit. It can be, I've known people that have done them downstairs in the basements. I've known people that have done them in the upstairs. So essentially, it's almost like, like house hacking, but a little bit different. So housing, part, essential part of... So all of these guys, when I was, you know, during the subprime crisis in 2004, 5, 6, all this, these guys were buying, you know, mansions, flipping them. I was buying apartment houses. And today in Texas, Oklahoma, and today was the hottest part of the real estate market, apartment house. Why? Cash flow. And there's that um, something they add on and they're renting barns and all kinds of on their property. We have a very good friend in Malibu who actually built an amazing home and they built an AD on their property and um, and they're renting it crazy for 700. So, but before you go out and make a decision, let's talk about the pros and cons of buying and renting. On the buy side, we are now faced with interest rate risk because the Federal Reserve has said that they're going to raise rate three to four times this year. What that means is that your mortgage payment, if it's variable and not fixed, could potentially go up. Also on the buy side, you're gonna have property taxes. And if you scour the country, you can see the governments are going after homeowners and landlords or property tax. The other piece on the buy side, of course, is all the capital work. Think about roofs and landscaping and all those kinds of things. Those are real things on the buy. Another one is, of course, property insurance. It's very different on the renter side, which is more renter. Insurance. One thing to pay attention to in 2022 is as mortgage rates go up, the affordability to buy goes down and people will move over to the renter side and those bubbles will get. Lacey Hunt was one of the guys with the Dallas Fed, I think. 
and he was talking GDP, gross domestic product, equals money supply, M2, times velocity of money. When, when they measure GDP, they don't measure broken glass. And what broken glass is, you know, Daniel, when you walk around the shopping centers, a lot of places are empty. That's broken glass. That means, so they don't measure the losses. They measure the gains in GDP, but they don't measure the number of shops that are closed. So it's not an accurate number. So ever since Lacey Hunt said that, I went to our friend's place, I'll mention his name, and he was trying to sell me the whole top floor of his building. And I walked into that. And I, I turned it down because it's office space. I don't understand office. I, I understand apartment houses. I don't understand office. So I went into this office building I was supposed to buy. It was 70% empty. That's broken glass. That means somebody is not receiving the monthly payment. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.